Ah, oh, that's so awesome. I love the way this vehicle works. There we go. We're king of the mountain here. Up, 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 up. It's going to be perfect, actually. There we go. <laughs> Let's go and hit this jump here. There we go. That's so satisfying to see. I love this vehicle. All right, here we go. We're going to let it rip. Now, this thing does like the two-wheel quite a bit. Let's see if we can make it over this here. Kind of clear those rocks. Oh, we bottomed out quite a bit there. YouTube Komodo Gaming here bringing you guys another episode of Scrap Mechanic. Today we are back with another vehicle build. Now this is a vehicle build that I've been wanting to do for quite a while now and it just took me a while to get motivated to figure out exactly how I was going to do it. Uh, you guys have been suggesting that I make some sort of futuristic car so I took the two things that I absolutely love. I love off-road vehicles and I love like concept cars and just kind of mashed them together here. So we've got one vehicle but three different variations that we're going to go over here today and these will be available on my workshop. The link is down in the description. And also, if you missed yesterday's Scrap Mechanic episode, we did go over the prison. We had kind of like a final tour, and I added one more section to that. So if you missed that, that will also be down in the description. And remember, folks, if you are enjoying Scrap Mechanic, leave this video a thumbs up. It helps out my channel, and let's go check out these vehicles. Okay, so I know some of the first comments are going to be, Man, that really looks like the Batmobile. That looks like the Tumblr from the, uh, the new Batman movies. And... I have to admit, yes it does. It also looks like a couple concept cars that I found on Google Images uh, that I really actually thought looked amazing and I would love to have one of these in real life. So what we have here, we've got a street version of this, we've got a race car version of this car, and then we have a off-road version of this vehicle. These all kind of do different things. The off-roader can go up mountains, it's like a canyon crawler or a wall climber. The race one is extremely fast, it handles really good. Got a lot of thrusters on it, and then you have kind of like a, a street version that you could take around town, even though this would be really, really odd to see on the streets, but I'm going to say I like the way these look. So I'm going to give you guys a look at the backs of them here, and we're going to jump right into showing you guys how these things work. So, to get into this vehicle, this is kind of like, I think it's called like a seagull door. Let me go ahead and pop that open. It, you see them on a lot of sports cars, and of course it gets stuck here. Uh, there is no collision, by the way. I just noticed Scrap Mechanic updated, and this made these doors, like, get a lot worse. See? You click on them. I, I don't really know what's causing that. They're not actually bouncing into any of the parts here. It's just kind of strange. But anyways, you can pop open both doors there. It's got a roof hatch. It's got a uh, sunroof here in the top. Now, as far as the way this thing functions, obviously, you can see that there is quite a few bearings. Actually, let's move this over here. That way, we don't catch the other bearings. So you can see that the vehicle has four arms. You've got the two in the front and the two in the back. Uh, those are all set on controllers and they're angled down. Now as far as the way the suspension works, it's three suspension pieces. The backs actually have the same amount of suspension. They're just kind of hidden on the inside. It actually looks really cool when the vehicle's driving because the whole arm shimmies up and down. I'll show you that here in a second. Now, the difference between all these suspension-wise is really just settings. Uh, they all have the same suspension setup. Now, the way this one steers, uh, this is the only one like this. This is a front-wheel steering vehicle. The other vehicles all steer off of four wheels. Uh, the reason I did that, I just kind of wanted to make this one different. I wanted this one to have like a different feel. And I must say, handling-wise, this one doesn't turn nearly as good as the other ones for obvious reasons. Now, somebody's probably going to ask, well, why didn't you just make the whole arm turn sideways? And here, let's go ahead and take this off the lift real quick. See it kind of form up. Uh, when I say that, the only thing that actually moves is the front here, uh, the front wheels. The arm itself stays in the same position. Now, I had thought about making the whole arm move, and I actually had a prototype that did that, but it felt really goofy. It didn't feel right at all. Like, the whole body would move over, and it just didn't feel like it had the grip, even if I cambered out the tires to get them to try to match up with the ground. So I really wasn't a big fan of that. So that's why I kept with just the uh, the front wheel steering on this one. So, anyways, as far as features, the one key is the door, two key is the whole roof hatch. Uh, the roof is really low on these things, so if you don't use that hatch, you sometimes do get stuck in the blocks, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, Scrap Mechanic just had an update. I don't know. They said something about improving some collisions. I don't know if it's anything with the blocks. Seems like the doors are getting more stuck than they usually do, and that's uh, kind of concerning. 
I think really the update was based around some of the well tool and I think they're getting ready to finally add those pistons in so I'm really excited about that. But anyways back to the vehicle let me go and show you the suspension. Right when you take off you're going to notice the back arms they dive forward so this is really cool so say we just nail the gas here you'll see how they compress and I thought it would be just awesome to hide the, uh, the suspension in the back as you can see just to make it look like there is none and just looks like the arms are doing all the work and I left them exposed on the front just to try to make it look different make all the arms not look exactly the same and you'll notice uh, changes in the bodies from each uh, version of this vehicle now this is probably the lowest version of the vehicle because the tires are smallest on this one but say you're on a terrain like this and there's rocks or something there's actually an area over there I should probably demonstrate this on uh, you can click a button to raise this. Also, if you high center, uh, there's some bumps around this map that you can high center on pretty easy. Let's see if we can try to get stuck here. Oh, we're just going to fall off the cliff. Uh, good thing is you can pop right out of this vehicle. You do not get stuck in it if it's flipped over. Now, the other vehicles have countermeasures if you flip over to kind of take you back over. It's kind of cool. Uh, let's hop back in here. Uh, another thing I wanted to highlight before we show you guys how the arms function to give yourself more clearance. I am using mods, of course. You can see that I'm using mostly Durf mods, but Lord Payne has one of the most awesome mods that I've ever seen. Something that I've waited on for a long time. Uh, check this out. These are all interior parts. You've got the start stop button. You've got some new switches. A new it looks like a handbrake down there. Uh, you've got some new dashes, so you can see the gauges. Now the gauges don't work. Uh, that would be awesome if they could add animation to that, but. It's a mod that I've been waiting for for a while now to make the interiors more detailed. I made that custom Chevy a couple months back and this would be this would have been something that I would have loved to have had. Anyways, let's go ahead and show you the kind of like the transformation mode. You hit the four key here and it will give you some more clearance. Now the one last key is the three key. It's a uh, you got some Pico thrusters back. I think they're called Pico thrusters on the Durf pack. Uh, they activate and it does give this thing a little bit more speed. Now, if you're asking where are the motors, they're actually motor blocks. Uh, they're built into the back of the vehicle. Uh, I couldn't, I had a couple vehicles that I was basing this on. I couldn't really figure out exactly where like the engine hatch would be. So I just put them as blocks instead of going in there and going kind of crazy with a bunch of bearings and trying to make it open up. Let's go and hit this jump here. There we go. That's so satisfying to see. I love this vehicle. Uh, now, one thing I don't know what to do here. I need a name for these vehicles. I don't know what to call them. Uh, I tried coming up with names and I just really couldn't figure anything out. So if you guys have any suggestions, I would like to have a unique name for these vehicles. Right now they're just listed as Komodo Car Mark 1, 2, and 3. So if you guys have any names for this, comment below. But anyways, that's the streetcar version. I would say I'm fairly satisfied with the way this one works. It isn't the best when it comes to turning. It does have a little bit of a wide turning radius. You kind of have to uh, use the throttle a lot while turning. But we're going to go ahead and move on to the race car version of this. And it's probably my favorite version. Alright, on to the race car version of this vehicle. Now, this is my favorite one. Uh, it's definitely fast. It's really, really nimble. And you can see uh, it's got several unique features compared to the other one. Uh, the arms have been cut down a little bit and extend it. I've also cut some weight on this vehicle to make it as light as possible. Now as far as body changes besides the arm, uh, you can see there's a big spoiler on the back of this one and it's got two thrusters poking out the back as uh, for a little bit of extra speed. Tire wise, it uses the same tire combination on the front but the back tire uses a much bigger tire uh, and also we have the four wheel steering. Now one more thing I want to point out before we take this thing around to drive it, it is cambered in really far on the front. Uh, this is because the suspension setup I have on here is a lot looser, or when I say looser, it's a lot lower number so it gives a lot more. Uh, so the front arms really dig in and sometimes when you're turning the vehicle likes to lean and somewhat tip. So this kind of makes it to where the uh, vehicle will come, or at least the tire will come back into contact with the ground to try to give it as much grip as possible. Now one more thing you're going to notice, uh, we've got some thrusters that are aiming down. A lot of times during challenges you'll see that we will use it in like Multiplayer Monday to pin down the vehicles. It's the same concept here, I'm just going to hit a switch to activate these. Because this vehicle is so fast and there's all these thrusters in the back, it's going to want to pick up and take off. So we're going to try to keep this thing pinned to the ground here. 
Uh, the other other thing you'll notice, there is no sunroof. This is like a complete roof on here. Uh, there is still the same hatch, and the doors still open up the same. I'm a little concerned while the doors are sticking, uh, now that I just updated the game. I'll have to look into that more, but the doors open up the same as the street version of it. So, the first thing you're going to notice, as soon as I get on the throttle, there is some thrusters in the back that are activated immediately with the W key. Uh, one thing you want to do is to go ahead and turn on your down, I call them downforce thrusters. That's going to be your four key, and that's going to pin this vehicle down. Now, you're going to notice a lot more movement on this one. Uh, as far as the, the way the arms react, the way the wheels turn, it's just, it's a lot more nimble, but it is a little bit more frantic looking. And every time Scrap Mechanic kind of makes a change with the way the bearings and the suspension works, it kind of changes everything. Because I've had vehicles with similar setups as far as the suspension and the way I have the bearings for the turning. And I don't know, ever since the update, these seem to freak out a little bit more. So don't really know what to say about that. Uh, as far as other features, this one sets a little higher off the ground. It's transformation mode. It does go up fairly far. Uh, you can see that the front end's pretty high off the ground. Now, you do not want to be driving in this mode because it's going to want to tip. It's really high off the ground. The center of gravity is obviously higher with it being this high. So, I'm going to go ahead and go back into this mode, number three. All right, here we go. We're going to let it rip. Now, this thing does like the two-wheel quite a bit. Let's see if we can make it over this here. Kind of clear those rocks. Oh, we bottomed out quite a bit there. Probably should have shifted into the uh, little bit higher mode uh, going over that. Now you can see here, we're going to turn here. Now watch how it tips on two wheels. It is pretty good about pushing itself down, but if you are in the higher mode and do like really tight turns, it is going to flip over. Now if it does flip over, there's a couple countermeasures that you can uh, do to try to tip it back. Uh, simply holding the uh, W key or turning your downwards thrusters. There's enough power that it's going to tip you back over. So uh, that's kind of a useful feature here. but. Ultimately, this is definitely my favorite one. I do like the off-road variation quite a bit. And let's see if we can get ourselves stuck here. Nope, it's actually not going to stick. We can always go in a little bit higher mode. Yeah, I need to make a dedicated track for this one because it definitely needs quite a bit of room to kind of show its full potential here. Uh, this is kind of a little tight area. I do love this tile, though. This is one of the new tiles in the terrain update. And it just makes for a perfect kind of testing ground, especially for off-road vehicles. It's kind of a natural track. Yeah, definitely happy with the way this one came out. Also wanted to point out the uh, paint scheme on this one. It's kind of a tribute to uh, Ferrari a bit. If you see a lot of their F1 cars, they use the red, white, and occasionally they pinstripe in black, depending on which year it is. And that's kind of, when I think of fast race cars, uh, Ferrari's one of the first things that pops in my head is I love the way the F1 cars look. So that's kind of what this is based off of. But anyways, let's go ahead and go back to the start line here. And... We're going to go ahead and test the off-road one, and I still probably need to do a little bit more testing and tuning. Uh, that's the last model I finished, but there's a couple things that I do want to try out on it, so... Alright, here is the beast. This is the big off-roader. I say the racer is my favorite. This one comes very, very close, just the way it looks. Uh, this one, if you're going to make comparison or comparisons to the Batmobile, the big tumbler, uh, this is going to come pretty close to it, just the way it looks, how beefy it is. Now the changes, obviously the first change you know, notice is the two tires on the front. Uh, it's got a double tire setup. This is obviously for climbing up walls, getting over big rocks. Uh, the arms themselves are a bit stubbier, but they set a little higher off the ground on their default setting. Suspension wise, this one gives a lot, so you're going to notice a lot more bounce in this one. Uh, same with the rears. Body style wise, the rears have a bigger arm on the back and there really is no purpose to that. I just wanted, to, wanted it to look a little bit meaner so you've got like a complete fender on it. It flares out at the top. Same, you've got a big spoiler on the top of this. Now this one's got a couple more features than the race car one does. Obviously you got a big brush guard on the front, a flared out bumper. There's more thrusters on the top of this and the reason for that is this thing can wall ride. You can just go straight up the skybox, straight up the cliffs over there, or the big mountain over there. We'll probably test it out uh, on that side. So you've got that. You've got a light bar at the top. Uh, other than that, uh, that's probably about it. This one doesn't have as many back thrusters, so it's not as fast, but uh, it's definitely, I would say, a little bit more versatile than the uh, other vehicles as far as the off-road terrain maps. 
So we're gonna go test this thing out. We're probably gonna conquer the small cliff over there first and then we'll go over to the mountain and just show you the features and how this vehicle works. All right, as far as the features, the way this thing works, it is four wheel steering here. The one key is the side door. The two key is the roof hatch there. Now the three key, this one in transformation mode, it sets a lot higher than the other vehicles. Obviously that's to get over rocks, get up cliffs. Now say if you still do get stuck, which there is a chance that that's gonna happen. This one's got some bottom thrusters on it. So say if you get stuck on the side or you high center on a rock, just hit the five key and boop, you can pop right over. And if you use that with a combination of the W key, you can uh, make yourself go forward a little bit. I wouldn't spam it too much because it does have a tendency to wanna flip over backwards. So you've got that, and then your four key is your downwards thrusters to get up walls, to get up the, uh, the cliffs. So we're going to test this real quick. Let's go back down into the normal mode. And we're going to try to just go up maybe this cliff over here. This looks like a decent one. And then we'll go over to the mountain here in a second and hit that. Uh, one thing you're going to notice, I think we're going to hit about right here. Uh, the first thing on these wall riders or canyon crawlers you want is the front wheels to always be the first thing in contact. A lot of mistakes that I see made on like... Uh, say rock crawlers and stuff are that the fenders or the bumper pokes out way too far you can see we're bottoming out here so let's go ahead and go into the three key i'm gonna put those arms on the ground and we're gonna pop over over right here there we go and let's see if we can go straight up vertical right here i think we can do it about right in this area there we go try not to get hooked on these rocks some of these new rocks are really you can really mess yourself up on them there we go it's gonna crawl over come on Got to master that last rock there. Come on. There it goes. There it goes. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, you can always uh, adjust the power. Say you want a little bit more umph in it. Uh, you could also make it to where it would just probably just bomb the hills if you really want to do that. Uh, which we might try that here in a second. Just try hit something really fast and see how quick it can get up the uh, canyons. All right, we got another little demonstration here. We're gonna actually just bomb this one. We're gonna go as fast as possible. We're gonna go ahead and go in the high mode here. And that's a pretty vertical cliff there. So let's see if we can power up over this. Get some good speed here, there we go. <laughs> oh, we're gonna do a flip here. Let's see if it catches. All right, let's go ahead and kick off our down thrusters here. Let it land. Let's go ahead and try to get it forward. Try to go back on all four here. Yeah, that's one thing you gotta really manage. If you keep those downforce thrusters on, if you do manage to tip over, you are going to take off. So you do a little bit better job about uh, counteracting that. So let's go ahead, turn those back on. It did do a very good job of bombing that, and it just went straight up. That's one thing I love about this vehicle. So let's go ahead and do that again here. Gotta avoid the tree. There we go, there we go. So deactivate those downwards thrusters, kind of carry over this cliff here. Reactivate, pin back to the ground. And it's really cool, if this thing does start two wheel, just kind of let off, it will pin itself back down. So it's really useful. Uh, this is a weird formation. I'm not really sure I've seen this one yet. This actually looks really cool. Uh, maybe we can try this one here. I've got to kind of maneuver between these trees here. Or, yeah, tree and... I don't know if that's a tree that I can just go through. Some of the trees don't have, like, collision meshes or models, whatever you want to call it. So you can kind of just go right through them. So uh, we're going to try right here. I'm going to try keeping it in the uh, lower mode and see if we can just go straight up it this way. Actually, this one's more than vertical. This one, that starts to carry back a little bit. Let's go up like this. There we go. Yep, we're going to need the uh, three key here. Kind of power over. It's kind of hugging the rock there. All right. Ah, oh, that's so awesome. I love the way this vehicle works. There we go. We're king of the mountain here. Oh! Oh, look, it's Scrapman's Secret Flowers. He made a video about these. I, I, this is the first time I think I've seen them, though. We've got Secret Flowers now. <laughs> this might be a good thumbnail up here, actually. This looks cool. Anyway, so we kind of conquered the mountain. We'll just power over it here. And let's just watch it pin itself, say, up here. So we're going to go... Actually, I want to go vertical here. Let's go and turn our downwards thrusters off. I need a little bit of assistance to get off this. There we go. So yeah, as long as you work those together, so say turn them off here, kind of edge over, turn them back on. There we go. We're going to pin ourselves to the mountain again. It's not bad. So we'll kind of just crawl right back down it here. Uh, kind of stuck. There's a couple really big points on this mountain. Actually, I think the collision's not, it's not even really touching the bottom of this. Uh, let's kind of shimmy out of this mode real quick. Turn that off. Go back into it. Go back up. There we go. And we're just going to kind of drive down it here. 
All right, I guess probably one of the last demonstrations I should do is actually go climb up the skybox. So we're going to go to the edge of the map here and just shoot straight up. So we'll just drive over here. Can I show you guys how this works? I love this little section here, Section here though. This would be really good for a race. Uh, we might have used that actually in a multiplayer Monday, possibly on the last one, maybe the food challenge. Which, by the way, that was really fun. If you didn't catch that video, that would also be down in the description. Everybody can guess which food item I used. All right, we're going to do a little bit of wall climbing here. So let's go ahead and edge up to the wall. We're going to turn our downforce thrusters on. And let's see how much we have to do here to get up on this wall. It should ease up once you give it a little bit of thrust here, a little bit of power. Actually, let's go up in our big mode. There it goes. All right, we are going to go back down in low mode. There we go. We are now on the skybox, or well, actually not the skybox, we're about to be on the skybox, we're just on an invisible wall. This looks actually really strange. Uh, I don't know where the top is, but we're eventually going to get to it here. Uh, this looks kind of cool, it looks a little odd. I wonder if I were to just turn off my downforce thrusters, uh, how much air we can get, and how much this vehicle would actually fly across the map, because I think it would. Uh, this one actually isn't too heavy, I did use some heavy blocks on the bottom, but pretty much everything else is the lightweight blocks. Uh, the one block I do avoid using, and that's the ultra light blocks. Those don't tend to react well with suspension. I can't tell what I'm doing here. Let's go ahead. I think we're there. Uh, let's go back into this mode. I can't tell. Are we are we at the top of the box? Wow. Did they make the skybox higher? Because this looks really odd. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We might have fallen off the skybox. Well, obviously, you can see that it can wall climb. Actually, let's see if we can turn off those downwards thrusters here. We can use it. Let's go ahead and correct ourselves. See if we can land on all four here. There we go. We got it stabilized. Let's go ahead and go back down in the low mode. This is really odd. Where am I going to land on here? Up, 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 up. It's going to be perfect, actually. There we go. <laughs> oh, that works. For, that works really well. I really wish I could see where the skybox actually begins. Because the one thing I do notice, uh, if you're going to go up straight vertical, sometimes you do have to brace for it. Uh, sometimes you can get going on this low mode but a lot of times you might want to go in high mode before you hop up on something it's just something about the way the wheels catch anyways that is the off-roader that is a probably now the more i play with it the more it becomes my favorite vehicle let me know what you guys think below though which vehicle was your favorite uh but yeah if you have any more suggestions i'm looking for a name for these because i will name it on the workshop i really don't want it to be called komodo car mark one two and three I uh, would like to have some names. Uh, we can do three names. Or we can do one name and just, you know, make it the Mark 1, 2, or 3. Yeah. Uh, let me know what you guys think down below. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Everything helps my channel. Oh, that's a big jump there. Kind of want to almost go back. We're going to hit that one more time. That's going to be one of our final things we're going to do here. But yeah, uh, thank you guys for all the love and support recently. It's been absolutely amazing. Uh, the kind of the comeback or starting to do videos again. It's just one of those really cool things to see the reception from you guys. So uh, hopefully we'll continue it here. Trying to do at least four to five videos a week. So we've been doing pretty good at that. Actually, here we go. We're about to hit this epic jump. I got to hit it. Oh, am I going to miss it? Here we go. <laughs> oh, this thing looks so odd. Yeah, I love it. Love it a lot. Anyways, folks, that's going to wrap it up for today's episode of Scrap Mechanic. We will be returning with more Scrap Mechanic on Monday with Multiplayer Monday. We're also going to have some brick rigs. Uh, I'm going to try to maybe do a little bit of my summer car. Somebody told me there was actually an update, and I looked at the patch notes, and it really wasn't that much or anything of significance. So uh, we'll see what happens there. i got to see what kind of shape my save, my save game is in. But also, I'm looking for uh, other new games to play. Hopefully, we get some new games coming out soon because it's been a little dry here in the summer as far as new and fun stuff for me to play. So we'll try that. But anyways, folks, if you have any suggestions for future builds, comment below. And we will see you guys next time on Scrap Mechanic. Thank you.